The Biography of President Umingagwa, A Triumphant and Difficult Journey President Emerson Umingagwa reminisced on his amazing life, which has been characterized by several adversities and near-death encounters. During his 81st birthday festivities at State House, politicians, diplomats, and members of the First Family attended the event, which was arranged by the First Lady, Dr. Auxilia Umingagwa. President Umingagwa recalled three situations in which he came close to passing away. The most recent occurrence happened in 2017, when he was poisoned while acting as vice president at a ZANU-PF rally in Gwanda. He attributes his survival to Vice President Constantino Chiwinga and the First Lady, who swiftly flew him to Harare and subsequently to South Africa while he was unconscious. The President's journey started in 1959 when he joined the UNIPE United National Independence Party in Zambia. He eventually switched to the ZAPU and met nationalist figures like Robert Mugabe and Herbert Chitipo while he was in Tanganyika now Tanzania. He had his military training in Egypt, where he and 13 other students were later detained for their support of Zimbabwean nationalists, referred to at home as rebels, who had deserted DR. Joshua Komu during the liberation movement split in the early 1960s. Ndabaningi Sithol served as the leader of the rebels, which also included C.D. Mugabe and C.D. Eno Sankala. Among the group, President Umingagwa was the lone survivor while his co-workers were killed. He spoke of his 10 years in a dark room at Kami Prison as he thought back on his time in prison. Being underage at the time was thought to have saved him from the death penalty. In addition, he mentioned two additional close calls with death, including an incident in Tanzania's Iringa and his association with the Crocodile Gang. In the time I lived in, the legal drinking age was 21, which is why I avoided being executed. My co-workers were hanged, he claimed. The only survivor was me. I then remained in a dark room for 10 years at Kami Prison. God has treated me incredibly well. None of my 13 co-workers, with whom I was in Egypt in 1962 and 1963, survived. In China, we were only five when we trained, no one else is alive. Here, my teammates were executed once more. Even Crocodile Gang members acknowledge that I am the lone survivor. I experienced three close calls with death. First in Iringa, Tanzania. But that is a tale for another day. Next, when I was kidnapped and sentenced to 10 years in prison because I was a minor, I survived. The third one happened quite recently. I was poisoned there in 2017. This young man Vice President Constantino Chiwinga is the reason I'm here. He and the First Lady managed to get me to South Africa quickly, where I made it out alive. They tell me my route of travel, but I have no idea. They tell me that as we were traveling from Gwanda to Gweru and subsequently Harare, I was unconscious and dozing off on Chiwinga's lap. So I want my family to be aware of how much this young man helped me. I was taken to South Africa by him. It's been a difficult journey. The President's resiliency and the many challenges he has faced throughout his life were appreciated by Vice President Constantino Chiwinga. He praised President Umingagwa's dedication to the liberation struggle and his resilient character, highlighting the significance of destiny and divine intervention in his journey. The President made light of his experience going by multiple names, Dembudzo, at home and Emerson, at school, in his amusing account. He chose the name, Emerson, without telling his parents. And he thrilled the audience by telling a tale about how his mother was shocked to learn his school's name during a results announcement. He was given the name Emerson after reading a novel in the school library. Hence, he said, when we went to school in the 1940s, results would be announced on a weekend and parents would come. Teachers would therefore announce the results class by class. While I went by Dambuzo at home, I went by Emerson at school since I never told my parents that I had changed my name. My name. The teacher pointed at me and said, Emerson, you performed well in English and mathematics stand up. But because I was seated next to my mother, 
I was unable to stand up. My mother said, Hezvo, when I rose up at that point. Hezvo, is Koweva Kunsiani? The birthday supper included family members, cabinet ministers, vice presidents, traditional chiefs, lawmakers, diplomats, and clergy, and it went above and beyond what the president had anticipated. The menu included a mix of traditional and Western cuisine that were renowned for their therapeutic and nutritive qualities. Dr. Auxilia Mingagwa, the First Lady, underlined the value of women's roles in creating and sustaining families and urged them to foster surroundings free from social vices. She also urged people to celebrate and keep eating traditional foods because of their health benefits. The life of President Mingagwa is an example of fortitude, selflessness, and divine protection. As Zimbabwe turns 81, his incredible journey continues to motivate and influence the course of the country.